Hello, my name is Don Dapkus, and I am the Applications Engineering Manager for our audio power amplifiers here at Texas Instruments. Today I am coming to you from our audio lab where I want to demonstrate a new circuit implementation that we have recently incorporated into our integrated circuit headphone amplifiers and line drivers. What we've done is oftentimes when you connect a device to a speaker set, you can hear some ground noise between the two. I'm sure we've all run across this and you usually solve it by changing the grounding between the two devices. However, your customers may not be as savvy as we are, so they may end up having the ground loop and then complaining to you or their friends that your equipment is not designed very well. So what we have come up with is a way to eliminate the problem from your circuit so that you can ensure that your audio quality will be as good as you intended no matter how the customer connects up their circuit. So we've built a demo to demonstrate this, which I'll walk through right now. So what, what we have here is we have two EVMs. We have a TPA6132A2 EVM, which is used as the driving EVM. So this represents the, your system. So like, for example, if you're making a cell phone, portable navigation device, MP3 player, notebook PC, anything else where you have an audio output that somebody may want to con config may want to add the output to drive external amplified speakers, which is represented by this EVM over here, which is a TPA 2012D2 EVM. And this is just a stereo 2 watt class D amplifier that I have connected to two speakers so that we can hear the audio. The two EVMs are connected together by this three and a half millimeter cable. And that's simulating the cable that your customer is gonna connect from your equipment to their speakers. In between the two EVMs, we have put a 0.2 ohm resistor, and this resistor is used to inject the noise to simulate the ground noise between your system and the customer speaker system. So the two test clips here are connected to my audio precision, which I am using to generate a 20 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak 60 hertz noise signal, which is then heard through the speakers. The switch is used to enable and disable our ground loop breaking circuit. So if we look at the power supplies, again, these are completely isolated. So we can see the output is not connected to the earth ground at all on both EVM, on both EVM power supplies. They're completely isolated, and we have the connection between the two EVMs through the 0.2 ohm resistor. So if I now enable the output of the audio precision, we can now hear the 60 hertz noise that we're all familiar with. And we can also see it on the oscilloscope, which I have configured to be 10 millivolts per division. So it's about 20 millivolts peak to peak. So it's not a very large signal. If we play the audio, we can clearly hear the noise behind the audio making the quality sound very poor. Now, if I enable our ground loop brake circuit by flipping the switch, you can hear that the noise has completely gone away. And when I play the MP3 file now, we can hear that the audio quality is as clear as you intended when you designed your circuit. So what, what are the details behind the circuit? How would you implement it in your design? Well, let's look at the diagram that I have here. So the line between here is demonstrating the ground differential between the two circuits. So this is the receiving circuit, which is the one driving our speakers. It's connected to the transmitting circuit by the three and a half millimeter cable. So the circuit is actually implemented on the transmitting side. And what we've done is we've broken the ground from the headphone jack. This is the headphone jack. We've broken the ground by the insertion of about a 10 ohm resistor in series with that connection. At the top of that resistor, we actually have it fed into the terminal on our headphone amplifiers called S-ground. And what this is, is it's connected to the resistor divider network inside of the IC that is driven, driving the non-inverting inputs of our amplifier. What this does is it basically biases the output of the amplifier at the ground potential of the receiving side so that there's only one ground in the system and we can eliminate the ground differential between the two amplifiers. The switch I have is just merely shorting out this 10 ohm resistor. 
We have also implemented this circuit on one of our new EVMs, the TPA20, excuse me, TPA6136A2. And in this case, you can see the headphone jack is here, and the ground is connected back to the S-ground terminal on the IC. And we've also placed a resistor pad where you can put a ground loop breaking resistor. So if we look at the EVM, we can see here that that resistor is right here, right underneath the headphone jack. So when we ship the EVM, it ships with a zero ohm resistor there, so it works like a normal headphone amplifier. If you wish to try out the circuit that we've implemented, you can replace that zero ohm resistor with a 10 ohm resistor. This technique is not only applicable to our headphone amplifiers, but it also can be used with our series of DRV600 line drivers, which have differential inputs, so you can use the same technique on those devices as well. So I hope that you have found this video informative, and I hope that this can provide you with a better quality piece of equipment for your end customers. I would very much love to hear your feedback, and in order to do that, please log into our audio community at the URL listed on the screen. You can give me feedback on the video there. You can ask questions. We have a lot of FAQs loaded there, and there's a lot of discussion about audio topics, so I greatly encourage you to check that out. It's really quite fun. So thank you very much for your time today and have a nice day.